I've asked individuals to be brave, the team to be brave, and it's going to take that, I think, to beat the US for us to get past that that hurdle. It's I think we need to be braver. We need to, I've talked about bravery. What is it? It's, it's actually, it's okay to have fear, but the best players and the best teams act in spite of fear. Like they, they rise to that occasion. And I think any player coming in who is uncapped, who is new to the environment, blended with a group of players who've been in the environment and, and have known what it takes to, to win for Canada, that could be a recipe for success. So I don't know what I'm going to get, but what I do know I'm going to get is a group of players who are committed to when they put that jersey on, they're going to give everything. Team Canada getting ready for the She Believes Cup. And Bev Priestman, this is going to be her first tournament, her first game at the helm. And I'm sure she didn't expect to be having to play this without Christine St. Clair, Diana Matheson, Erin McLeod, to name a few there that are out with injury. And then, of course, there's Ashley Lawrence, Kadisha Buchanan, Jordan Heidema, who were not released by their team. St. Clair hasn't missed a Team Canada camp since 2011. Talk about longevity. Uh, so, Ollie, how does this affect their preparations for the Tokyo Olympics? Well, it's challenging because, you know, we talked about when Bev Priestman got the job that one of the advantages of appointing her was that she already knew the players and that would be useful in a year where there wasn't going to be much time to prepare for the Olympics. You know, we didn't know how many games they'd be able to play, how many camps they'd be able to hold um, because of the pandemic. So to have a handful of cornerstone players miss three of those games in one of those camps is obviously not ideal. Um, but I think with any challenge, you look to turn it into an, an opportunity, right? And, and there's a couple of things that, or a couple of ways in which I think they can do that. One, I think, is that the pressure is kind of off at this tournament now. Um, I think Bev Priestman is going to have a bit more license to experiment, to try some different players. And if the results aren't good, she kind of has a get out of jail free card because of the, the players she's missing. And, and secondly, if you do start to experiment and you do put, put some unfamiliar players in the lineup, if you can just get one player out of this tournament who kind of emerges and surprises and shows that they can maybe contribute at the Olympic Games, that's a win. You know, the, the squad is, is going to be stronger for that. So it, it's, it's difficult. It's a setback for sure. But I, I think there are some opportunities that, that come out of that that Bev Priestman will, will look to take advantage of. In building off of Bev Priestman, because I think there's a lot of unknown based upon, you know, the public expectation about the way this team will play, whose role may, might be elevated and who's maybe, you know, may take a step back with the new manager coming in. I'm just looking at the players. It's about them showing that they are good enough. They are adaptable enough. They belong in the 18 member squad for Tokyo. That's what it's about. It's not about the 23 that are going to be playing at the She Believes Cup and you take away six or seven that aren't there that could potentially be part of that group. It's not about competition for places, isn't it? And you need to make sure if you are a player that you make an impression both in the games and away from the games on the training ground as well that you deserve a spot in the upcoming Olympics. So let's take a look at some of these young faces. I mean, you have nine players who are under the age of 23, just four over the age of 30. I mentioned some big names who are out. Even Bev Priestman in one of her interviews has said, you know, at some point we're going to have to look at Team Canada without Christine St. Clair. I'm sure they don't want it to be this soon. But if there is somebody you're looking at uh, possibly who can emerge, who would that be for you, Gareth? Oof. Well, where do we start? Do you want to start at the goalkeeping position? That'll get Ollie to weigh in because Kaylin Sheridan's arguably the top Canadian goalkeeper on form right now. And that would be a big departure away from Stephanie Labbe, who's been really the rock for this Canadian team in terms of their goalkeeping position for recent years. Now, oftentimes with the national team, that informed goalkeeper doesn't necessarily become first choice right away. So it'll be interesting to see how the Labbe shared in situation works out. And even other very good young goalkeeper, Riley uh, Foster coming into camp as well. I want to see if Revere at right back can really be the solution, which could push on Ashley Lawrence into the midfield. I prefer Lawrence to stay out away from left back, but the left back position right now is a question mark for me. Who is the best fit at this time? And if there's a young player I'm looking at, maybe a maybe a Grosso in the middle of the in a, in a defensive midfield role. I think that she has to be pushing Des Scott at this point of her career. Is it too much too soon for Grosso? She's kind of grown into the team as the game goes on. So those are some of the positional battles I'm looking for. They all happen to be on the defensive side of things. 
Yeah, I think you look wherever there's a player missing, right? And you wonder who could step into those shoes. So up front, it's, it's a real shame and it's kind of irritating, quite frankly, given she's not really a starter with PSG, that Jordan Heitzema can't play at this tournament because she would have started as the number nine against some top teams. And I think that would have been really good for her development. Um, but in her absence, and obviously in Christine Sinclair's absence, you look at who is going to be the number nine. I don't think there's really a kind of target physical striker in that same mold. So they're going to have to adapt there. Um, right back is, as, as Wills mentioned, is one. Again, it's a shame Bianca St. George can't be at, at this camp because with Lawrence not there, there could be an opening in that position. Uh, I agree that Sheridan, I think, will, will really push uh, Steph LeBay in, in go. And, and I agree again that Julia Grosso is one to watch out for with someone like Diana Matheson not there. So you, you look at where the kind of big players are missing and, and who could emerge in those positions. Uh, and I think there's a few battles to watch in, in that regard. Yeah, Team Canada definitely in a transition time, that's for sure. And we're going to see it right out of the gate. Their first game at the She Believes Cup. This will be a doozy. Bev Priestman saying this will be baptism by fire. Team USA, be sure to join us at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time.